Hi guys, we're gonna go over um, lesson 15, but if you have any questions, you can always email me um, and I can help you directly, okay? I wanna make sure too that you notice that we will be doing our lives on Friday on Google Hangouts or Google uh, Meet instead of on Zoom. So make sure you make those changes. You might have to download the Google Hangout app um, if you're using your phone. So just make sure you make arrangements to do that. And we're gonna get started. So you're supposed to do lesson 15, the whole thing um, by Thursday. So the first thing to remember to do is copy and paste the new code in a Google Doc. That way, if you need it later on, um, you're able to get to it. So this kind of new code here is what I'm talking about. Bubble number two is a video to watch. You have some questions to consider to help you with velocity, so make sure that you have watched this full video and it tells you all about how velocity works. On each lesson, remember that I am only grading the do this part right here. So as long as you've gone through and made sure that each one of these things is done, you're going to be good to go um, as far as your grade goes. So. On this particular program, it says velocity X. One way to move sprites in Game Lab is with the counter pattern. For example, sprite 1X equals sprite 1X plus 1 moves a sprite by one pixel each frame of the draw loop. This pattern is so common that sprites have a velocity X property that does this for you. Do this, drag a sprite velocity X box directly below where your sprite is created. So over here in your code, you create your sprite first. And remember, you create the variable, and then you set the animation. That's like getting it dressed. You're telling the computer what the sprite looks like. In this case, it is an orange fish. And then you have the fish velocity x equals 0.5. That is done right here on line number three. Okay, if you get stuck, you can click show me where and it will show you where your block should go. Then you write the name of your sprite in the block. So right here, make sure you have named it fish. Then you assign the velocity a property value of one. So right here is where you change it to one. When you run the code, the fish moves across the screen. Then it says rerun the code giving the velocity x property a different value. So if I change this to 5 and I run it again, what happens to the fish? It moves faster. So this right here is your speed. That's all you need to do for this one. Number 4, moving down. <clears throat> Here is a feather sprite that should be floating down the screen. If velocity, velocity x makes a sprite move to the right, can you find the block that will make the feather move down? So just like in class, we talked about if x goes left and right, then y must go up and down. So when you run the program, your feather slides down. So do this. Find the block that will make your feather sprite go down the screen and use it outside the draw loop. Again, if you're not sure, click show me where, and it's right here, right below the sprite creation. So you created the sprite variable, you told it what the sprite looks like, in this case a feather, and then you told it the sprite's velocity, meaning it's a movement across the screen. Click finish. <clears throat> now we are on five. Now, five is about rotating. So, whereas velocity moves it across the screen, X and Y, rotation is spinning in a circle. So, it says, we've already learned how to make your sprite spin by using the rotation block. For example, when you wanted your sprite to rotate by two degrees each time it was drawn, you put sprite rotation equals sprite rotation plus two inside the draw loop. Now you can use sprite rotation speed to make your sprites rotate a certain amount of times when they're drawn. 
If you want your sun to rotate by two degrees each time it's drawn, you can use sun rotation speed equals two before the draw loop after you create your sprite. So we want the sun to spin, right? So it says do this, make the sun rotate by three degrees each time using the rotation speed block. Again, if you're not sure, click show me where and it will show you that again, we're working outside the draw loop right up here, okay? So you want to find the rotation speed block. So we're looking for rotation speed right here. Drag it and put it in. We have to tell it what sprite we want it to do. This is sun. And then they said three degrees. So we enter a three. Then when we run our program, it rotates. It's spinning in a circle. Click finish. Now remember, if I'm going too fast, you can always pause this video and back it up too. So don't get overwhelmed if I'm going too fast for you. <clears throat> now we're gonna control the speed. You use sprite rotation speed outside the draw loop to make your sprite rotate when your program started. You can also use rotation speed inside the draw loop to change the speed of the sprite during the game. For example, a sprite can start rotating when the user presses the space bar and it will keep rotating until it's told to stop. So we have a wheel. Do this. Look at the if statement inside the draw loop that checks whether the space bar is pressed. If you're not sure where that is, click show me where and it shows you right here is our if statement. Inside the draw loop, Use the rotation speed block to make the color wheel start spinning when the user presses the space bar. So we have if key down space, and then we wanna set the rotation speed. So we find rotation speed, put it inside, make sure we rename it. In this case, it's called wheel. And remember, it has to match exactly. Capital letters, everything has to match your variable up here exactly. All right, and then we want to give it a speed, so we're just gonna start with a two. Now let's see what happens. Nothing, because I haven't pushed the space bar yet. This tells it to only spin when the space bar is pressed, so it shouldn't start spinning until you push the space bar down like I'm doing right now. As soon as you let go of the space bar, it should keep spinning because it's in a draw loop. Okay, click finish. Now we're gonna control the speed of the spin. So we have this little bot guy here and it says your code before the draw loop sets up the beginning of your game. Your code inside the draw loop controls how the game will change while it's being played. In this game, the helicopter bot starts off at the bottom of the screen, but when the space bar is pressed, it flies up. So this paragraph right here is very, very important to know. You have stuff outside the draw loop in the beginning that set up the beforehand, and then you have the function draw loop here, and that's going to be while they're playing. Okay? so. Do this. Um, actually, this right here, guys, I would really put in a Google Doc so that you know um, you have it for later because it's really important to understand, um, you know, what which part of these set up which part of your game. Remember, at the end of this, um, we're going to create an actual game. So we want to make sure that you are set up to do that. All right, so let's look at the do this part. Do this, use an if statement inside the draw loop to check when the space bar is pressed. Use the velocity y block to make the sprite fly up when the user presses the space bar. The sprite should keep moving up even after you let go. So this is the exact same code that we just did on the wheel, okay? We're working inside this draw loop now, only now you'll notice that there's nothing in the draw loop but the background. Okay, 
So if you get stuck, you can go backwards and look right here, the if statement. Now remember, you can always copy this and then just change your details. So you go show text and then you can copy the text. Show blocks and it brings you the blocks, okay? So I'm gonna show the text and I'm gonna copy the text and then we are going to paste it in here See how it's already done for you? If you're not sure where the draw loop is, it's the function draw here. And then you can paste the information. Now you're gonna notice that it's gonna give you warnings because we copied it. So that if you try to do this, it's gonna say that there's an error because this name does not match, right? There is no wheel here. The variable here is a flybot. So again, you have to copy it exactly. It can't be wrong at all, okay? So um, if you still get this error that pops up, look for symbols like this. And what it's telling you is it's unmatched the little bracket. So this bracket right here copied on the wrong line, okay? You just delete it, it'll take that one away. And then when you try it, it says there's another error and you see this image right here, it's an unnecessary semicolon. So it's telling us each little step along the way of how to fix the code. Does that make sense? So you just go through and you're adjusting each little thing until it will finally let you actually put in your code, okay? So watch for stuff like this that's telling you when there's errors and when you can't show the blocks. The other way to do that, I'm gonna restart mine so I can show you the other way. If you don't like the copy and paste and trying to figure out the details, you could just look back here and check out which code you need. So I know, oh, I need an if statement and a key went down. So then I can go back over here drag the if statement, find the key went down code. You see I'm just dragging each one over and then I look back and it says, oh, I need the wheel rotation speed on this one. Okay, well, what does this one say I need? This one says I need a velocity Y. So now we're just problem solving through each one. So let's put a velocity Y in the um, if statement and see what happens. Key went down. We're going to do the space bar, the velocity y, and we got to match the name flybot with a capital B because it has to be exact. Now let's run it and see what happens. Here's our flybot. I push the space bar. And which way is he going? He's going down. Which way does it say we want it to go? Up. So what are we gonna try first? We're gonna try to put a negative because we used the positive and it went the wrong way. Now it works. Okay, so you guys don't forget to work through those problems and debug your code, okay? All right, we got the do this working, so now we click finish. On eight, we're gonna change the velocity this time, okay? So we need to um, follow this very, very detailed. Um, on this one though, I can't answer it, otherwise I, I'm gonna get locked out. So this one, I want you to look at the code, think about what we just did, and then answer the question here, okay? Once you've answered this and submitted it, it should save, and then you should be able to run the program. Number nine, multiple controls. As you saw in the last level, you can change the sprite's velocity with multiple if statements. In this program, the fish has three different types of movement, each of which should be controlled by its own if statement. So remember in class, we talked about you can only have one giant draw loop, just one. 
But inside that one draw loop, you can put lots of different if statements because there's lots of different keys, lots of different things that, that might interact with your sprite, okay? So it says, do this. Look at the three if statements inside the draw loop. So here's our draw loop. Here's our three if then statements. Use a sprite velocity X blocks inside of each statement to make the following three movements. So this is asking you to do three things right here. Three things. The first is if the user presses the right arrow key, move the fish to the right. So on your keyboard, when you push the right arrow, you want your fish to move right. Then you want, if the fish gets to the right hand side of the screen, move the fish to the left. So this is talking about where the fish is. If you are unsure, you can always click show grid and then put your mouse over and you'll see under show grid, you'll see uh, numbers pop up right here that tells you what the position is. Remember that the edges go all the way to 400, okay? So the X position over here on the edge of the screen is 400, okay? Then it says if the fish gets to the left-hand side of the screen, stop the fish. So once it goes right and hits 400, then it goes back left. And this time when it gets over here to the left side, it is gonna just stop. It's not gonna keep going back and forth, okay? So if the fish reaches the left edge, fish stops. So right here, if the fish X position is less than zero, the fish set animation fish R should do what? Okay, that's the part that you want to work on. Now in class, I used to show you the example solutions like this. Since you don't have access to that, I'm gonna show it to you here. This is what the end program will look like. It still looks the same, but this time it responds to the directions, see? And then it stops. So you add in this code, line 15, line 20, and line 25. You're just adding what happens to the velocity of the sprite, okay? So the first one, you want the velocity of x to equal zero. Then you want the velocity of x to equal four. And lastly, you want the velocity x to equal negative four. That will go ahead and get your fish to do the three different movements. That's why they're separated into three different if statements, okay? All right, so how you're gonna do that is simple. It's just same as before with the click and drag, okay? You are going to find your position. This one right here is the fish X position is less than zero. So we need to find our velocity X equals, so we have velocity X. Now, if you just drag velocity X over, and place it in there. It will automatically bring the purple over with it, okay? We name it fish, and we want this one to be zero. All right, next one, we're gonna bring the same code, exactly the same code over again. You wanna rename it fish again, and this time we want it to move four. And the last one, same exact code, velocity x. And this time, fish moves backwards, negative four. This time when we rerun our program, if I click the right arrow, it moves right, hits the side, goes back to the left. When it gets to the end of the left screen, it stops. Click finish. And now we are on five or 10, excuse me. This is a bunch of notes again. Remember that the best way to save these kind of notes is to copy it and put it in a Google Doc. That way you can save the code itself because this is code you're gonna be able to use later 
in the lesson. All right. So this shows you the blocks. It shows you what it's going to look like here. And click continue. Bubble 11 is about jumping. So you're going to notice that these lessons are linked to the bigger project. Remember, at the end of school, we are going to have a project where we make a whole big video game. And I'm going to expect it to work a lot better than the first time we tried it, right? Because this is our second time working through video game coding. So be very careful on these lessons because they are going to save and be used later. All right, jumping. You now have all the blocks you need to make your sprite jump. The sprite should jump up if it's on top on the ground and the user pushes the up key. Then it should start moving back down when it reaches the top of its jump. So just like in real life, if it goes up, it would come back down. So do this. This is the part I'm going to grade. Find the if statement that checks whether the sprite is on the ground. And look at the if statement inside of it that checks whether the user has pushed the up arrow key. Again, if that's too much and you need to show me where, it will highlight it down here. Okay, look at this statement right here. Now you're going to notice that when it talks about being on the ground, you can't just tell it, check to see if it's on this brown bar, right? You've got to give it a position. 324 is the location of this box, the so check, okay? Make the frog jump up when the user presses the arrow keys. So when somebody actually clicks on the arrow keys, let me show you right here. We have to use the key down button, okay? Similar to how we did it before. Same kind of thing. We're just now going to put it in a different order. So we look at the statement here. Is the frog sitting on the ground? That's what this code says to us. Okay, now we've got to tell it, well, if it is sitting on the ground, then what is it I need to do? Right here, if key down is up, well, we need to give it a velocity. So we find the velocity, and this time it's velocity y, velocity y. We drag that over. We rename it frog. We'll just give it a negative 2 to start. So if it's down, if the key is down, it's going to do this. If the key is not down, that's the else. Remember, it's an if then. If it is not down, then we want the sprite velocity of our frog to be zero. We don't want him to do anything, right? So we want him to do nothing if there's no key being pressed. So he's going to start sitting on the ground. If the up arrow is pressed, he's going to jump up, okay? Now it says make the frog stop moving otherwise. So we did that. That's the zero. Now it says add code that does the following. Show me where. Oh, down here. Set him back down. You see how it tells you right here? Set him back down. So now we don't want our frog to just fly off into nowhere. We want it to actually stop and come back down. So we need to do that in an if statement. Check whether the frog sprite has reached the highest point. Again, this is directions. Where on this grid is your frog? If it gets to this position, 30, then we want the frog's velocity to change. So we're going to drag this over, sprite velocity. Oh, I apologize. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, that's the mushroom. See, even I mess up sometimes. So, all right, let me try again. Sorry about that. So, we have our if statement, the velocity, the velocity. Our frog jumps off and it goes off into nowhere. Okay, it doesn't come back down. Now, right here, it says if the frog gets high enough, send it back down. 
we need to put our if statement inside that spot right there, okay? So we put the if statement right there. If the frog reaches a certain position, the frog, need the frog's Y position, right? Frog. All right, if it reaches to the top, then we want its velocity, frog velocity, to go to three. All right, now let's see what happens. Our frog is on the ground. I push the up button and he jumps. And last time he flew straight off the screen. Now he hits the top and he comes back down just like a real hop. Now, if that's it, right? Check whether it goes back down. If so, make the sprite go down. So we are done. We don't need to go any further in the code. This is going to build into the next unit. So we click finish and we go to the next one. This is where we're going to work with the mushroom code, which is the code that I messed up on the first time and tried to change already. So the mushroom, now you just need something for your sprite to jump over. So right now the mushroom just sits over here. The program already has a mushroom just past the right edge of the screen, but it needs to be moved, moved towards your frog. So you see it's just hanging out right here? Okay. So we're going to use the velocity X blocks to make the mushroom move left across the screen. So you are going to look at the code that is after your frog. It's going to look like this, mushroom. Okay. Again, it was the code I tried to change the first time that we didn't need to change it. All right. So on our screen, we scroll down past the frog, past the frog into the mushroom. Notice it is still inside the green draw loop. It's still inside the draw loop. So right now it says if the mushroom's X position is greater than 30, then nothing happens. Right? That's what it's telling the computer. Because right now, there is no code at all inside of that. So what happens then if we add different variables in the draw loop in this if statement? It is going to respond to what happens with its location. Again, let me show you that example. What's up? We've got our frog code here about what happens when it goes up, frog code about when it comes down, and then right here, we're going to simplify our mushroom code so that it just tells the mushroom to change its velocity. All right, so we're going to remove the if statement if it's already there. Some of you might not have it. Um, if you haven't done this lesson before, that's fine. There will be nothing for you to remove. And we are just going to look at the velocity x right here. We're going to drag that over here. We are going to rename it to be the mushroom. So it knows which sprite we're talking about now. And we're going to rename it negative 1. Okay? So now our mushroom is moving. So now we can jump over the mushroom. That is the only thing that it says to do, okay? So that's it. That one little change was all we had to do. Don't work ahead. Click continue. And then we're gonna be on a screen that shows us looping, okay? Now, again, let me show you the example. It will have brought in all of the code that we did on the past lessons because these are all connected. So if you didn't do the previous ones, the code's gonna be messed up. So make sure that you're doing these in the right order, okay? All right, looping. The game will be more fun if the frog can jump more than once. You can make the mushroom loop by checking whether it's moved past the left edge and moving it back to the right edge when it has. So originally, this mushroom, when it reaches the end, it's just going to disappear. That would be the end of the game. So we want it to come back around again or to move back across the screen so we can jump over it again instead of just disappearing. 
So we're going to do this. We're going to find the if statement that checks whether the mushroom has passed the edge. You can click show me where again and it will take you down to the bottom. If it doesn't work, you can look for these gray boxes. So find the if statement that checks whether the mushroom has passed the screen. Okay. We're working with our mushroom again, so we're past all the frog stuff, and we want to be down here below the mushroom. We want an if statement, it says. All right, so we're going to go with an if statement. Then we want it to check to see if it's reached the edge. Well, that then we know that's a direction, okay? Just like we did the frog code right here, we're going to do the same code for the mushroom this time. So we need our less than sign. We need to tell it that right now we're talking about the position of our mushroom. Mushroom. And this time we're talking about it moving over to the left. So it's a negative number, negative 30. So it is identical to the frog code, only this time it's an X negative because it's moving left and right. Then we want to tell it when it gets there. So we're going to go back to the X position of our sprite. And we're looking for the X. Tell it we're working with our mushroom. And remember the edge of the screens are 400. Okay. Now when we reset it, our mushroom is going to move across the screen. Our frog will still jump over it. Only this time, when our mushroom hits the end of the screen, it is not just going to disappear. It's going to come back at us again so that we can jump over it again. It's going to keep going. All right, so we've done all the do this. We click finish. And we reach this part of the screen where now it says we're done and we can try these challenges. None of these are required. Once you reach the checkered flag, you are good to go. Remember that if I went too fast on this lesson, you can stop the video, you can pause it, and you can go back um, and rewatch it anytime you need. All right, guys, email me questions. Thank you.